Okay, let me show you the chaos. So this is where most of our furniture is right now, under these tarps in front of the house. There's a bit more over here behind me as well. It's actually less chaotic than it was a few days ago before we had the kitchen all outside as well and my mum and Mauro were cooking off a gas stove and basically living outside. We've managed to more or less put the kitchen back together now, which is something. Here is our living room. As you can see, it's looking pretty empty and there's something missing in the background. The chimney is gone. I'm also standing on a new floor, although you won't be able to tell, but this is a new, flat, even, level floor, and uh, we've lost quite a bit of height. The room feels a little bit shorter now, but we've got a flat floor. We've also torn down the chimney in the bedroom, so that's the bedroom wall, and this is where basically all our belongings are, either here in this big pile, or here in the pantry. The chimney in the kitchen is also gone and we have a new kitchen floor as well which you also can't tell but it is now level and flat all the way to the end. To be honest it's probably a good job we didn't bring the baby home now because this is no place for a new baby. It's uh, been quite chaotic. We didn't do this work ourselves. Um, we had people in for a few days to do it while I was in hospital. Actually they started the day I gave birth so that was a bit of a challenge for Mauro because he was at home trying to organise that, their first day of work and uh, I was calling him from the hospital <laughs> letting him know what was going on and he was waiting for the builders to turn up and he was like should I go, should I stay and uh, <laughs> it all worked out, he managed to just catch them before uh, he had to leave and then he got to me in time <laughs> but yeah and then the work's been going on since uh, since then basically and I got back yesterday. So now the challenge is to put the house back together before the baby comes home. We're not sure when that's going to be but we should have at least a month um, to try and work on this. We have a slight issue with tomatoes, there's a lot of them basically and I didn't really want to do any preserving and canning of tomato sauces and ketchups and stuff like that which I would normally do because it's just such a long process to get a big batch going for it to be worth it and I can't really fit anything that's longer than like two hours <laughs> um, into my routine at the moment because I have to go and express milk so interrupting canning to go and do that is just a mess so I don't want to kind of start that. So I'm going to see how many I can use up in a sauce, maybe a couple of jars of sauce and we'll just try and get through it in the next few days and keep it in the fridge. We also have a lot of courgettes and peppers so I'm thinking I might make a sort of very rough kind of ratatouille type thing as well. So some people have told us we're crazy for doing this, but basically what we want to do is have the tube that comes the exhaust 
tube <laughs> that comes out of the, the stove. Um, we want that exposed so that whatever, like however much heat there is on that tube will sort of come into the bedroom and uh, help warm up this room um, a bit more, which doesn't have a stove and we don't want to have a second stove. So um, that's the plan. So yeah, I'm gonna clear the rubble and I'm gonna brush off with a metal brush the, all the soot from the wall and then we're gonna cover it with mortar and make it look like the rest of the walls. So we're cleaning the soot, even though we're gonna put mortar on top, we're cleaning the soot because we've been told that the soot sort of seeps through. So if you put white mortar, it will eventually become like blackened. So I don't know how that happens physically or chemically, but I don't want it to happen. So it doesn't cost much to do it. So I believe it. I haven't researched the science <laughs> of it, but it sounds, it sounds about right. <laughs> well, I think we have that problem in some places actually. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Cleaning it all up. Mm. This is the best drink in the world. Nice ratatouille. I like the combination with the couscous, like the hot and the cold. Mm. up having to can a few things anyway because it just turned out to be way too much. I knew we weren't going to use it in the next couple of weeks um, if I just put it in the fridge and our fridge is super small anyway so that was just not going to happen. Annoyingly it was quite a small batch to put in the pressure canner. Um, I should have just done a big batch after all. But yeah we've got a few jars of uh, tomato sauce now so that's good. Once the upstairs section of the chimney was clean it was time to start on the downstairs. How's it going in there? It's dusty. I don't think I can scrape much more. You should come and see it. I look like a miner. I look like you do a, look like a miner. I look like a coal miner. <laughs> oh. By doing this work, we're actually undoing a lot of stuff we've already done. The hearth I built, the mortar we applied around the inside of the chimney last year, and the shelves that I've built upstairs. We could think of it as frustrating, but I guess it's actually a sign of how far we've come, that we now have the confidence to make these bigger kinds of changes, which are part of more ambitious plans, and not just do quick temporary fixes without a long-term plan in mind. Dusty. I'm very dusty. Yeah, I think it's the worst part of the story. I think applying the mortar is the wrong one. Mm. I'm more into constructive tasks than destructive tasks. <laughs> but yeah, I'm looking forward to fixing this and making it look nice. And also, I'm really looking forward to dying. I'm really tired of dusty floors. <laughs> Can't wait to just be able to like lie on the floor, yeah. cold tiles. Oh. Yeah. Walk barefoot, yes. not walking barefoot. It's exactly 90 till here. That's what we measure originally. Okay. We're going to 
Still working on the pantry shelving. This is the last wall. I feel like we've got a very streamlined operation going on now because we've done three other walls. Mauro is cutting everything down to size. My mum is sanding everything, and I'm screwing everything together. another layer of varnish on these shelves because they're just not quite shiny enough for my liking. I want them to be really easy to wipe clean so I'm just sanding them in between and going for a second coat. I've had with a couple of these shelves is that some of them just will not lie flat against the support. If I pull it down here it pings up at the back and it's just a bit wobbly and I think that's because the wall that these rails are attached to is uh, not completely flat and it puts the rails under some tension and I think that's why we're getting this thing happening but what I've done is just drilled a couple of holes into the metal support and I'll put a screw through there into the piece of wood that I'm going to attach and it'll just pull everything into shape. Uh, that seems to have worked. So a big part of our day at the moment also involves going to the hospital. We usually go in the evenings and yeah, it's about six hours I guess in total. Um, getting there, being there. Um, we spend at least two hours when we're there doing skin to skin, which is really nice. We take it in turns and uh, we deliver the day's milk. And yeah, it's the best part of the day. Mauro is driving, as you can see. I'm so essentially the milk one. <laughs> the milk, he's the milkman, yeah. <laughs> Driving very competently, I must say. He even drives at night and on the motorway. Oh, so. I don't like driving at night. That was really scary. My eyes are not made for uh, that high contrast of darkness and lights everywhere. I didn't know to enjoy that. Yeah, he's still having a bit of issues with his eyes, so maybe I'll start driving at the I'll drive in back at night. But yeah, he's doing really well. Look at him go. Good.
we enter through a back door of the hospital, which is not allowed. But I am carrying a cooler, so it looks like I'm transporting an organ. So I think nobody, <laughs> nobody even cares. <laughs> Hold a bit. We wanted to finish this video by saying some thank yous. Firstly, to my mum. Um, thank you doesn't really cover it. <laughs> um, she's been here for like six or seven weeks, way longer than she was initially expecting to be here. And uh, yeah <laughs> it's been tough it's been tough for all of us but um yeah it's been it's been hard for her and we could not have made it through the last couple of months without her being here helping us on yeah with everything she's taught um, me how to drive she taught mauro how to drive there were many weeks when mauro was working full-time and i was in the hospital and he couldn't do all the things that needed doing in the physical time that he had and my mum did so much for us during that time. She's, in the heat. Yeah, in the heat. She's the only reason the garden doesn't need completely redoing next year. <laughs> um, that it's not completely overtaken by weeds and just a disaster. The only reason we're getting anything from the garden at all this summer. Um, she didn't let it fall apart, which I'm incredibly grateful for. Yeah, also we want to thank all our friends from, from here, from the area, from Valencia, from other parts of... Uh, of uh, Spain from from England that just supported us both with like physical help of driving me around or taking care of the chickens or feeding the donkey and also with just moral support of like inviting me to dinner or <laughs> or uh, just just sending sending love and and just well wishes and mm. all of that so we're really grateful because it's it, it's a really important part of like staying sane during this whole period yeah. and, and, and like... Before my mum arrived we could not have managed without our neighbours stepping in to do a yeah. lot. They took on all the chores because Mauro wasn't here um, when I was in hospital the first time round um, because Mauro wasn't driving. So yeah, it was a lot for them as well so we're really grateful for that and huge thanks <laughs> to my parents and my brother yeah. because they also been a huge help just both supporting us and driving me around and letting me stay with them and just like <coughs> yeah just just being being there which yeah. is what you what you want from your family <laughs> so 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 yeah huge thanks to them too because they're also have their own things and their own jobs and they're also busy mm. and um, like it's uh, it's hard for them too so yeah. um, huge mm -hmm. thank you to them we also want to say a huge thank you to all of you for your lovely comments and your support over the last few months it's really been like three months like may june july of us feeling like we're in a crisis basically it's been just putting our fires it's, yeah. yeah i feel like we're at the end of it now um even though it's still hard having a baby in the hospital at least I'm healthy and I can do stuff that's a huge bonus and like mentally for me that feels a lot better we don't have the worry of what's going to happen because we know what's happened he's been born and he's fine so there's a huge worry kind of gone um so although it's still not it's still not amazing we're through it really feels like we're out of the <laughs> crisis period yeah and we're really grateful for all of your lovely comments and support throughout the whole thing from the months when I was just in pain and didn't really know what was going on to the hospital and being in and out for the last couple of months. Yeah, I read every single one of them. I yeah, <laughs> we always read we always yeah. read all the comments. Um, but especially this time, like yeah. this time I was like kind of looking forward to reading them because I knew <laughs> there was going to be a lot yeah. of like support and stuff that, that made me feel good. Yeah. So. 
we especially, appreciate it. Especially when we didn't know what was going on and it actually really helped a lot of people mentioned their own experiences with hard yeah. pregnancies and all the sorts of stuff that had gone wrong for them and how difficult a lot of people <laughs> seem to have it with, uh, with pregnancy and stuff like that. So that made me feel a little bit less alone. And yeah, I appreciate all the comments. They were yeah very helpful and supportive so thank you we also wanted to say thank you to um everyone who supports us over on patreon or has sent us any coffees on ko-fi i don't think i've ever mentioned patreon on an actual video but i've put the link to it in our description and some of you have found it <laughs> for yourselves and uh support us over there so thank you so much we don't <laughs> we never really expected it but a few people asked once about patreon so we made one and uh yeah, thank you so much to everyone who's decided to support us over there. Thank you to um, Mark, Todd and Mio who support us at the highest level. Um, that's just incredibly generous of you and when I put that level on I really didn't think anyone would support us on it so that really means a lot. Thank you to everyone who after the last video also sent um, donations on co on coffee, ko-fi. Some of you are way too generous, <laughs> you really shouldn't have um, and we're incredibly grateful for it. Um, I hope I've thanked everyone personally over on coffee anyway but i just wanted to say it here as well because um yeah we don't expect any of this and it's always um a huge surprise when people decide to buy us a coffee or something um it's just it should really be called nice. diapers now Diaper, buy the diaper. <laughs> yeah, no more coffee <laughs> yeah <laughs> and finally finally um some people have sent us things as well which is another crazy surprise so we've got some really lovely wool here. This is from Trish in Australia. And she's told me about where this wool is sourced from and it's uh, really lovely. I think the wool is from Tasmania actually. And it's really nice. Uh, it's a merino and yeah, they're all, yeah. they're all really lovely and soft and I can't wait to knit something for the baby with these. And she also knitted, oh, yeah, crocheted this, <laughs> <laughs> this little guy. Let's just put it. I hope I'm just counting that it will focus. <laughs> <laughs> I love the detail that it has like eyebrows to add to the expression. <laughs> I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but it has eyebrows and it's amazing. <laughs> does the hat come off? The hat oh, comes yeah, it does off. come off. I didn't realize that. <laughs> <laughs> so good. And finally, last but definitely not least, <laughs> thank you to Josh from the Netherlands who knitted and sent us this amazing little set of tops and bottoms for the baby he's going to take a little while to grow into these but and i cannot uh, wait to dress him in these Aren't where's the little guy and the little guy oh there was a little um like a little doll a little, guy a where is it doll. no i know where it is it's I just, with I, the baby I put things. it with the, i put it with the toy which is also yeah. amazing <laughs> um so yeah how gorgeous is this and i know there's a couple of other things in the post as well from people more knitted things so i'll show you those when they arrive but I love knitted things. yeah this is just the most lovely surprise and i know how long things take to knit yeah. so we really <laughs> appreciate it and also really cool buttons i don't know if you'll see them on camera but all different and like vintage really cool buttons i want this outfit for myself yeah i'm kind of jealous <laughs> <laughs> and of course our parents both of our mums have also been busy knitting little things as well so Great thank jacket. you to the grannies for that Little jacket. This is this is just a small selection of uh, knitted items that we've had from the grandmas. Little hat. Little hat. And there's plenty more. And there's a lot more. So yeah, thank you <laughs> to everyone. Thank you for watching this video, and we'll see you in the next one.